in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed that the believer's destiny is to be a manifestation of the glory of God. And that to achieve that, there are three major phases. Watch this. The first phase is when you acknowledge the Lordship of Christ. The gift that you receive here is the righteousness of God. You do not earn it. It is something that comes as a gift. The life of God as a gift. Watch this. We are not saved by good works. We are saved by grace, but we are saved unto good works. You see that now. There is nobody who can earn salvation. For our righteousness is as filthy rags. It is important that as we help believers, we do not just start telling them, oh, you, you don't pray and fast to be saved. You don't study the Bible to be saved. No, you believe in Jesus to be saved. When you are now saved, there are many things that happen to you when you are saved that were not in you when you were not saved. For instance, the anointing that is within, that comes by the Spirit, that is the anointing that makes you alive, desiring you, desiring God, placing the love of Jesus in your heart. Now that you have that measure of grace, are, are you seeing that now? The teaching priest in partnership with the Word of God now leads you to a point of salvation, of transformation. You now begin to submit yourself to transformation. And as you are transformed, eventually, you will find out that you are becoming a certain kind of mysterious believer. And then a moment will come, you will encounter the power of the Holy Ghost. At that point, you have become a living epistle. God can show you to your world and you become a sign and a wonder. And men look at you and marvel and say, what kind of preacher are you? What kind of businessman are you? And if the person is interested, you can pass the person through the same phase. Are you seeing that it's not an exclusive reserve for some preachers? Everyone who passes through this phase, salvation, transformation, empowerment. Salvation, transformation, empowerment. That is the apostolic model that was used by Jesus to train the disciples and that was the model that they used to raise mighty men from the early church salvation transformation empowerment the greatest need of an unbeliever ladies and gentlemen every unbeliever in Asaba no matter what you do to them if you do not bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus you really did not help them the greatest need of a saved believer is not to remain a baby but by the ministry of the teaching priest by the ministry of the word by the ministry of the spirit in partnership with all the spiritual exercises of fellowship and prayer according to acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer that was a model Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word now that person is sub submits to this process of transformation and then when you are transformed you can now begin to experience measures of God's power and even that empowerment does not just come it is not all the anointing you need in your life that comes at once it comes in measures according to Ezekiel 47 it comes in measures and that measure is controlled by number one the predeterminate counsel of God number two your level of faithfulness in using that which he has given you and number three your yieldedness to receive more these are the factors that govern the multiplication of the anointing 
I'm saying that because in the name of Jesus, there is someone who came for this conference. You may have started just with salvation, but the Spirit of God has taken you through transformation to a measure. And now you came for this conference because there is such an anointing. There is a mighty grace that is going to rest upon you. And it will turn you to become a sign and a wonder. There are pastors that are transformed sincerely. The missing ingredient in your ministry is empowerment. Just because oil came on your head does not mean you are anointed. Oil does not anoint. The oil has to be anointed itself to anoint. God does not hide his power in oil or mediums. His power is hidden in his word. His power is hidden in men. It is men that anoint the mediums to be points of contact. Are we together? Let's celebrate this gentleman. God bless you, please. If we are together, say amen. amen. I want you, whilst you are seated, to lay your hands on your head and now begin to cry unto God in one minute before we continue. Father, I desire, you know what face you are in right now. For some, you are not even saved. I'll be giving you an opportunity before the service is done. For some you are saved but the truth is that there is there is bankruptcy of grace of growth you have been around the things of church but not around the things of god there is a cry for transformation go ahead and pray and there are others in all fairness you have tasted of the transforming power of the spirit but your witness is not effective because you need to be empowered you need to be empowered you have tarried in this conference because the anointing for your destiny has been looking for you oh and may it find you tonight may it find you tonight may it find you that anointing that makes you a prophet indeed that anointing that makes you an apostle indeed that anointing that makes you a businessman indeed may it find you may it find you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah now yesterday i understand dr ogwele began to talk to you about the knowledge of god and he shared a few things and i just want to add a few things and then we'll pray it is important to know listen carefully i wrote here the riches and the full potential of the life of God is released only when we know God. The riches and the full potential of the life of God is only released when we know God. That means this Zoe life, when the believer receives this life, watch this now. The life of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities. But that the potentials in that life that you have received is only released to your world to the degree to which you know God. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. The B part says, but the people that do know their God. Two things will happen to them. Number one, capacity. They shall be strong. Number two, they shall do exploits, not talk exploits, not wish exploits, not explain exploits, not just write books about exploits. They shall do exploits. Hallelujah. John 17 and verse 3, Jesus is praying now and he says, and this is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God. Are you seeing that now? That the administration of eternal life is beyond just confessing Jesus Christ. That opens you up to the potential of that life. But the experience of eternal life is a product of knowledge. That the deeper your knowledge of God, the more the reality of this life you have received is made manifest through you. You believe that? Say amen. This is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. In fact, the Bible says, according as his divine power, it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, not of it, the knowledge of him. So grace and peace is multiplied to the degree to which you know him. You know him. The more you know him, 
the more you see grace the more you see peace the more you know him the more you see grace that means the difference between any two believers is not the love of god is the depth of their knowledge of god that has translated to the power that they command in their world did you get that now someone can tell the sick be healed you can speak over someone's destiny let doors be open and you find out that nothing happens it's not that you are fake it's just that you do not know god enough to have drawn the kind of strength required to produce that are we together there is a reward for every encounter with god it's like money if i have ten thousand, can i buy a house no but do i have money yes but not enough for that kind of possibility so if i stand to buy a house and i bring out ten thousand the owner of the house or whoever is selling it will say this is too small there are many of us it's not like you are not anointed but the capacity of god you need to make you reveal him to your world you don't have it yet so you stand before cases that are higher than your knowledge of god and you say in the name of jesus let your destiny be open and destiny is not open because every time you know God there is a weight you carry in the spirit and the realm of the spirit acknowledges it he said Jesus I know Paul I know this is what differentiates men in the spirit the depth of their knowledge of God but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded he says is someone learning now this is the difference between any two preachers believe me this is the difference between any two kingdom businessmen the depth of their knowledge of god there is someone who can find something about god the patriarchs finds found something about god and it brought them they were not even praying for power when moses watch this when moses had an encounter with the glory of god he never prayed that his face would shine he never prayed for certain levels of wisdom it was a byproduct it is impossible to meet and know the god of the bible and then remain the same the people that do know their god the preachers that do know their god the apostles that do know their god are we together The realm of the spirit has a very clear unambiguous understanding of everyone's level of the knowledge of God because you see the Bible tells us God is many things like you'll be learning shortly I hope we're working together it says God is light that means every time you encounter God how they know in the spirit is that your illumination increases when Jesus transfigured he showed us his spirit man the brightness of light so every time i encounter god you grow in the spirit not just by measuring chronological age your growth in the spirit is measured by the depth of light that is emitted from your spirit man which is a product of the depth of your encounter with god this is even how you can know the ranking of angels by the lights that they emit which is a product of how many times they have the privilege of encountering God themselves. Is someone learning? So, when I encounter God as a man of God, there is a level of light, weight, and stature that I command in the spirit. That translates to the level of empowerment that rests upon my life. Let's talk a bit about knowing God. This is where I'll wrap up for tonight. Are you learning? <laughs> now the truth is that according to Isaiah 40 and verse 28, the Bible lets us know that God is limited and God is infinite. When we talk about the subject of knowing God, it said, has thou not known, has thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Watch this. He fainted not neither is he weary then he says there is no searching of his understanding you know what that means in our quest to know god even through eternity we will never exhaust him so he's already given you an information from the start that as you seek to know god prepare to make it an eternal journey there is no arrival 
that you will never get to a point where you can quantize all of God and say this is God that was a mistake of Lucifer he thought that all of God that he saw was all that there was to God and he said if this is all that God has then I can be God I can exalt myself like the most high only for him to find out that there are many dimensions in God that he did not know are we together now the songwriter says the more I know you the more I want to know you how true when you encounter God, you will see that there are many layers to God now. So have this at the back of your mind. The second thing I want you to know, which is very important, is one of the major reasons why God is unfathomable is because of three attributes of God that he did not share with man. When the Bible calls us partakers of his divine nature, it is not every part of his divine nature we got. There are aspects of his divine nature that he did not share with man number one his omnipresence he did not share it with man man does not have omnipresence number two his omnipotence the ability to be all-powerful man is not all-powerful we are not almighty our power is derived from our union with him outside of our union with him we do not have power are we together and then man is omnipresent not omnipresent not omnipotent not omniscient all-knowing paul already educated us that we see in part and we prophesy in part that means the best of us is still limited in understanding it is because of these three attributes these are the attributes that brands god in a class all by himself this one he did not share with man omnipresence omnipotence and omniscience is someone learning now so as we explore God we are limited because we are not omnipresent we are not omnipotent we are not omniscient but then the Lord gives us an opportunity to be able to discover layers layers of the knowledge of him so as far as our work on earth is concerned there are three dimensions to knowing God and this is what I want to give you tonight I believe that this is one of the things that Dr. David Ogwele was attempting to bring yesterday. If you understand these three dimensions, you will know God rich enough to be a sign and a wonder on earth. Not rich enough to exhaust your passion for God, but rich enough to be a believer with the command of power and stature indeed. Are we together? I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up. You are exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorify I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till my nation see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up this song for someone will be your testimony it will become the anthem of your life that when men see you they will truly see the manifestation of the glory of God they will marvel and say can God make this kind of a man can God make this kind of a pastor can God make this kind of a prophet from what breed have you come these are men who have been forged out of the furnace of affliction men of power and men of might that men will look at you and you look like you are God upon the earth you will tame life like an animal because you have sustained power in the spirit.
he said leave me for the day breaketh and he said I will not let you go I will not let you go unless you bless me and say what is your name he said I am Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him the Bible says the sun arose and he called the place Peniel for I have seen God face to face there are people who will rise from this conference tonight this night you are seated but you don't know what is already happening in your spirit man my goodness Parakatos there are prophets that will rise there are Deborahs that will rise there are Catherine Kuhlmans that will rise it is time to not just talk about history that your altars in Asaba will be burning fire flames of fire flames of fire you go to church on Sunday and no devil can stand it's not just by acting and playing games you have become custodians of the things of the spirit God can trust you with the destinies of men you have access authority in the spirit receive manifest his power his wisdom receive manifest his power his wisdom listen can i tell you many people talk about wealth and prosperity and this is one of the things that has distracted people from loving jesus you have not experienced prosperity yet until you walk this path with the spirit you will lay up gold as dust and it will be as if you went to meet a herbalist you believe me most of the people who move around is because they do not know god when god walks with you when he is done with you look at what he did with solomon sit down let me give you this we have to wrap up i want you to write like your destiny depends on it is it possible to know god yes god again in the quest to make us know him because knowing him is connected to our accessing power is connected to our faith working is connected to our doing exploits in our world there are three dimensions to knowing god and this will wrap up my teaching tonight are you ready the first dimension in your quest to know god is that you must understand and know his nature and his character this is the first dimension whilst god is infinite there is no searching of the vastness of his person he has fragmented himself into three principal dimensions for our learning that every believer in this side of god's kingdom who desires to know god he's taking away the vagueness you can methodically he says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me man can know god the first dimension to the knowledge of god is the knowledge of his nature and his character please write the bible is filled with experiences where god revealed his character in exodus chapter 33 18 and 19 we have to be fast about this exodus 33 18 and 19 hallelujah it was Moses who prayed a very sincere prayer in the previous chapters before 18 he said show me your way then when we get to verse 18 he says I beseech thee show me your glory how did God answer that prayer verse 19 he says I will make my goodness everybody say goodness the goodness of God is an aspect of his glory do you know that this was the formula that was given to the nation of Israel? That every time their enemies came and it was sure that defeat was imminent, there was a chant that they made in the spirit. You are good and your mercy endures forever. They invoked his goodness and his mercy. And it's like two ingredients that when it lands upon the earth, victory must come even to the undeserving. The goodness of God.
in Isaiah chapter 40, 28 to 30. Isaiah 40, 28 to 30. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard the everlasting God? Watch this now. The creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not. This is, is giving you an understanding of the character of God. He is not weary. These things that are common with men do not happen with God. There is no such of his understanding. 29. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. 31. Let's try 30, the next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Are you seeing now? God gives strength to people who are weary because he himself does not get weary. These are the things you need to know about God. The nature of God. The attributes of God. I think one of the most concise descriptions of God's nature was as revealed by the psalmist. When you read the entire text of Psalm 103, it is a profound revelation. The most concise capture of the various attributes of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Verse 2. Let's run. And forget not his benefits. And he lists six of those benefits. Number 1, verse 3. Who forgiveth your iniquity? Who healeth all your diseases? Verse 4. Who redeemeth your life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Then when you read verse 3, it says, The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So you can learn God by his character. You can learn God by the attributes, the things that he's doing. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. Uh -huh. The Lord is merciful. Say merciful. The Lord is gracious. Say gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. So if you come and meet me and say, Apostle, God is mad at you. And he says you will die tomorrow. I respect your prophecy, but then my understanding of the character of God, that God is slow to anger. There is enough time for me and God to do a discussion. There is enough time for me to repent, provided I am alive. The understanding of the nature of God takes away fear. I judge prophecy by the knowledge of the nature of God. Is someone learning now? This is what gives you stability and maturity in the spirit. If you do not know God, men who act in his stead can mislead you. When the prophet came and met Hezekiah, he said, Hezekiah, I brought you a word from the Lord. Put your house together, you will not recover from this sickness. He said, I respect you. I know you are a great prophet, but leave me and God. There is something I know about him. He turned his face and said, God, remember, I know that you are a merciful God and you tied your mercy to time so that every morning it is renewed like time. Where did you keep the mercy? And God said, suddenly, oh, th that was what blind Bartimio knew. He said, thou son of David, if it is true, you are the son of David. If it's true, you are God, then mercy is connected to you. Have mercy on me. Is someone learning now? When you know God, fear leaves. Truly it does. The character of God. God is not just a judgmental God waiting to destroy everybody. The Bible says he knows our frame. He understands that we are weak. There is a healthy system of accommodation for our weakness in the economy of God with men. He knows. That's why the psalmist can go back to God. And say in sin and iniquity did my mother conceive me. Creating me a clean heart, he says, and renew a right spirit from within me. Do you know God that much? Do you know God that much? It is inconsistent with God's ways to judge you for the mistakes of others. The mistakes of your father and your father's father. You see that? There is a law that transgenerational iniquity can have an effect on people but you see when jesus came he revealed that that is not god's best it is based on that knowledge you can cast that thing and say whatever happened with my father i don't have to be a victim there is something about the nature of god that can bring me out of that who seen that this man was born was it him or his father jesus said neither but this has happened that the glory of god would be revealed Hmm. 
when you say you are a matured Christian, it's not just because of the time you have spent in church. These are the things that frame your spiritual stamina. You see that? So when you say, Apostle, God does not like you, you become a prayer request for me. I pray for you that God will bring you to a higher level of understanding. If God says he's going to bless 100 people here, I begin to pray for the remaining 99. Because one position is taken already. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting love. And with my loving, except you are not a Christian. You have to believe this. The world will bully you out of your confidence if you do not know God. We live in a world today where based on where you come from, who your father is or is not. The social media has their own system of bullying you out of your confidence. Complex will destroy you as a man of God. You will travel across the globe and people will look at you and they will, they will, they will call you by all kinds of names. But not when you know him. Not when you know him. The greatest status any man can have on earth is to be the son of God. It is a very superior status. I may never have a chance to be called barrister. I may never have a chance to be called president of a nation. I may never have a chance to be called the ambassador of a nation. I may not have any chance to be called his royal highness. But there is a status that is greater and higher than any sons of God. It says, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But the greatest revelation of the nature of God is found in 1 John 4, 7 to 12. Let's read together. Beloved, it says, let us love one another for the love, for love is of God. Watch this. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God and does what? So the ultimate measure of your knowledge of God is your love life, not enlightenment. The zenith of your transformation is the health of your love life, not the level of your spiritual illumination. There are many people who have access to mysteries, but their love life is dead. Verse 8. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Read it. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Why? For God is love. It's as simple as that. So you love God, but you hate the brethren. Something is wrong with that orientation. The Bible says that the knowledge of God at its zenith connects you to his love. That means the more I know God, the more I grow in the things of God, the more I find myself loving him, and loving his creation there are men of God who only use their members they do not love them there are politicians who only use their people they do not love them do not tell me you know God I will test your love life there are people who wish the downfall of others wish the destruction of churches wish the destruction of other people within the body no if you love Jesus Christ it is not in the Greek and the Hebrew and the Rema and whatever. The Bible says, he that does not love God, does not know God. Your love life must be affected. This is true. How do I know you are growing in the spirit? I don't just look at his power. The highest index for measuring love, greater than every other thing. The Bible begins to describe the qualities of love in 1 Corinthians 13. And it talks about all of those things. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is humble. Are you seeing now? So when the Bible lists the nine gifts of the spirit, it's actually one manifestation, love, expressed in those dimensions. Because he gives us perspective in 1 Corinthians 13. He says love is kind. So when he says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, no. He's saying from love comes all these expressions. more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my 
life. I want you to live with this revelation. God is love. That means the more of God I am becoming, the more of love. This is why I love my name. Do you know that's the meaning of my name? Selman means a way to love. What a good name. What a good name. How do you carry such a name and hate people? No. I love Jesus with all my heart. And believe me, I love his people with all my heart. That is why I would not manipulate them. That is why I would not use them for gain. I love them too much. I would not come and lie and deceive them and play games with them. Instead of telling people, stop stealing, stop doing all of these things. Just bring people to the revelation of the love of God. And there are things that when the love of God is at work in you, it becomes evil to do to men. Are we together? Yes. So I will not come and manipulate you and just prophesy and say, bring out all your money and give me. There's nothing wrong in giving. Don't get me wrong. But from a standpoint of manipulation, you do not love God. I don't care what tongues you are speaking. You do not love God. Hallelujah. In all your prayer, you must pray that the love of God in a higher dimension be shared abroad your heart by the Holy Ghost. Because when you love the Lord, do you know, I can stay all night. If this were all night, I would have taught you something about the nature of love. There are certain realms that only lovers get to. Even prayer warriors cannot get there. Even fasting giants cannot get there. If you actually touch that realm in the spirit, it's a love affair. The Bible says, no eye has seen. Is that in your Bible? No ear has heard. Neither has it come into the heart of man. What God has in store, not for everybody, for them that love him. There is a level that you love the Lord to a point where you earn another status in the spirit called the friend of God. Not everyone is a friend of God. And when you attain that status in the spirit, part of the privileges that you enjoy is God will never do anything in a territory, in a dispensation and not tell you, shall I hide this from my friend Abraham? Are we learning? The nature and the character of God. The result of this is confidence and freedom from fear. Not freedom to live carelessly, not freedom to be licentious, but freedom that he loves me and I'm aware that he loves me. I'm aware that God loves me. My goodness, if you are looking for a man who is loved by God, jealously loved, this is one man standing before you. I don't know about you, but I know he loves me. Listen, in marriage, the confidence of every bride, among other factors, is principally derived from the awareness of the love of her husband towards her. Women, am I right on that? Yes. That when a woman is aware that her husband loves her so jealously, there is a level of whether she's good enough or not, whether she speaks well enough or not, whether she's educated or not, the greatest person whose love matters to her in the earth is her husband. So if you as the bride of Christ, when you come into that knowledge of the depth of the love of that your husband, because everybody is a bride in the spirit, male or female, you are called the bride of Christ. And the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. You want to see how powerful a man is? Touch the wife he loves. Not the wife he married. The wife he loves. So it is this awareness of God's love that gives me the confidence to know that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. For me, it's not a Bible recitation. It's been motivated by an awareness of God's love for me. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, it says. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There are times that as I travel around the world, God granting me that grace. Sometimes, truly speaking, people can send me text messages and say, Apostle, please, I just had a vision. I saw you in a ghastly motor accident. I saw something happening to you. 
sometimes people reach you and say apostle i want you to pray i just saw that your name was taken to a shrine and these are these are genuine people they are not just people talking nonsense these are people who have a track record with god i know they are not lying but every time i want to fear love does not give me a chance to fear the confidence that i have is it not in your bible that he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm the consciousness of his character his nature it's been so engraved in my heart it says all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost when you give jesus anything including your life he's a keeper he keeps faithfully but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed he only keeps that which is committed i've handed over my life to him already i don't intend to take it back what then is the basis of my fear in fact for me to live is christ and even if i die it is still gain i have cheated life already from both ends when i pray for longevity is not out of fear my eternity is secured already it's only that i need time because of the program of god as an expression of my love for him for giving his all when i pray for longevity is not from a standpoint of fear i have been secured in his love already the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the koinonia the sharing together the participation the fellowship of the spirit paul said let it remain with you let the consciousness of the grace of our lord jesus christ let the consciousness of the love of god and the sharing the participation you have come into oneness with the spirit it says let it dwell with you can i give you number two what time do i have we have to wrap up so that we'll come back hallelujah I think i should just stop here i will give you the remaining two you are not afraid of going home late again what suddenly happened to you take it down for me oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever follow. I have sought you in the morning, and I have learned to walk in your ways step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step he lead you and you will follow him all of your days listen he can lead you out of these generational causes he can lead you out of the things that kept your father down you watch your father sincere but he went down your mother went down you watch preachers around your community go down if you can follow this good shepherd he can lead you he can lead you believe me step by step he leads me and I will follow you all of my days I refuse to be confused about life and destiny the one I gave my life to is a good shepherd he does not abandon his sheep even if it is in the night the Bible says while shepherds watch their flocks even by night he does not just take care of you in the day when times are good even by night when you are confused the good shepherd is still there watching his flock by night preacher hear me there is a way out of this ministerial calamity there is a way out of this financial crisis businessman hear me you are in debt but there is something about god you need to know 
going around just to keep collecting loan will compound your problems believe me there is a way out there is a way out jesus said i am the way i am the door the door is the authorized access to any realm the door is the authorized access to any dimension to the dimension of wealth he is the door dimension of ministerial exploit he is the door oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you i will seek you in the morning i have learned to walk in your ways step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days listen jesus said come on to me all ye that are weary and heavy laden he says i will give you rest that is his nature he gives men rest you cannot come to him and he leaves your life in trouble even if your boat is as boisterous when he comes he brings shalom peace come to your life i will be still and know you are god my soul be still and know you are god i will be still and know you are god my soul be still and know you are god i just sang my life for you when i found the nature of god it gave me rest God is mighty if he speaks it is final it is not just final because he is God it is final because he is the only God hallelujah I was teaching last week in Port Harcourt I think he was and one of the things I taught the people is that God does not have authority God only gives authority God cannot have authority because the nature of authority is that someone higher than you must give you and there is no one higher than him he has all power but not authority if god has authority there are three things that happen the moment authority comes to you one you must acknowledge an authority higher than you a person higher than you two there is jurisdiction because with authority comes limitation so when you say god has authority then you need to tell us the jurisdiction of his power and who owns the rest are we together jesus only had authority when he became a man and submitted to god but as god he has all power and no authority it is men that have both power and authority because authority is the legitimacy to use power if you have power alone your use of it is illegal. You must have authority to be allowed to use power. So if an armed robber has gun, he has power, but no authority. If a military man holds a gun, he has power and authority. That's why he does not go to jail for shooting. Demons have power, but they do not have authority. Only the believer was given both power and authority. hallelujah so every time you stand to question satan don't question power question authority <laughs> hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.